All right, continuation of Laura Ingalls Wilder, Little House in the Big Woods. I left off, it was the birthday, it was Laura's birthday, and Pa had given her uh, one, two, three, four, five, six spankings and one, and another one to grow on. All right, then Pa gave her a little wooden man he had whittled out of a stick to be company for Charlotte. Ma gave her five little cakes, one for each year that Laura had lived with her and Pa, and Mary gave her a new dress for Charlotte. Mary had made the dress herself when Laura thought she was sewing on her patchwork quilt. And that night for a special birthday treat, Pa played Pop Goes the Weasel for her. He sat with Laura and Mary close against his knees while he played. Now watch, he said. Watch and maybe you can see the weasel pop out this time. Then he sang, a penny for a spool of thread, another for a needle. That's the way the money goes. Laura and Mary bent close, watching, for they knew now was the time. Pop, said Pa's finger on the string, goes the weasel, sang the fiddle plain as plain. But Laura and Mary hadn't seen Pa's finger make the string pop. Oh, please, please do it again, they begged. Pa's blue eyes laughed, and the fiddle went on while he sang. All around the cobbler's bench, the monkey chased the weasel. The preacher kissed the cobbler's wife. Pop goes the weasel. They hadn't seen Pa's finger that time either. Wait, and here's, there's the picture. He was so quick they could never catch him. So they went laughing to bed and lay listening to Pa and the fiddle singing. There was an old man and his name was Uncle Ned and he died long ago, long ago. There was no wool on the top of his head in the place where the wool ought to grow. His fingers were as long as the cane in the break. His eyes they could hardly see and he had no teeth for to eat the hoe cake. So he had to let the hoe cake be. So hang up the shovel and the hoe, lay down the fiddle and the bow. There's no more work for Uncle Ned, for he's gone where the old men go. All right. Oh my gosh, now we're on chapter six. Two big bears. Oh, then one day Pa said that spring was coming. In the big woods, the snow was beginning to thaw. Bits of it dropped from the branches of the trees and made little holes in the softening snow banks below. At noon, all the big icicles along the eaves of the little house quivered and sparkled in the sunshine and drops of water hung trembling at their tips. Pa said he must go to town to trade the furs of the wild animals he had been trapping all winter. So one evening, he made a big bundle of them. There were so many furs that when they were packed tightly and tied together, they made a bundle almost as big as Pa. Very early one morning, Pa strapped the bundle of furs on his shoulders and started to walk to town. There were so many furs to carry that he could not take his gun. Ma was worried, but Pa said that by starting before sunup and walking very fast all day, he could get home again before dark. The nearest town was far away. Laura and Mary had never seen a town. They had never seen a store. They had never seen even two houses standing next to together. But they knew that in a town there were many houses and a store full of candy and calico and other wonderful things. Powder and shot and salt and store sugar. They knew that Pa would trade his furs to the storekeeper for beautiful things from town and all day they were expecting the presents he would bring them. When the sun sank low above the treetops and no more drops fell from the tips of the icicles, they began to walk, watch eagerly for Pa. The sun sank out of sight and the woods grew dark and he did not come. Ma started supper and set the table, but he did not come. It was time to do the chores and still he had not come. Ma said that Laura might come with her while she milked the cow. Laura could carry the lantern. So Laura put on her coat and Ma buttoned it up and Laura put her hands into her red mittens that hung by a red yarn string around her neck while Ma light, lighted the candle and the lantern. Laura was proud to be helping Ma with the milking and she carried the lantern very carefully. Its sides were of tin with places cut in them for the candlelight to shine through. 
When Laura walked behind Ma on the path to the barn, the little bits of candlelight from the lantern leaped all around her on the snow. The night was not yet quite dark. The woods were dark, but there was a gray light on the snowy path, and in the sky there were a few faint stars. The stars did not look as warm and bright as the little lights that came from the lantern. Laura was surprised to see the dark shape of Suki, the brown cow, standing at the barnyard gate. Ma was surprised too. It was too early in the spring for Suki to be let out in the big woods to eat grass. She lived in the barn, but some days, sometimes on warm days, Pa left the door of her stall open so she could come into the barnyard. Now Ma and Laura saw her behind the bars waiting for them. Ma went up to the gate and pushed against it to open it, but it did not open very far because there was Suki standing against it. Ma said, Suki, get over. She reached across the gate and slapped Suki's shoulder. Just then, one of the dancing little bits of light from the lantern jumped between the bars of the gate, and Laura saw long, shaggy black fur and two little glittering eyes. Suki had thin, short brown fur. Suki had large, gentle eyes. Ma said, Laura, walk back to the house. So Laura turned around and began to walk toward the house. Ma came behind her. When they had gone part of the way, Ma snatched her up, lantern and all, and ran. Ma ran with her into the house and slammed the door. Then Laura said, Ma, was it a bear? Yes, Laura said. Ma said it was a bear. Look, this is the illustration. Bef before they could see with the uh, lantern light and get close enough, Laura began to cry. She hung on to Ma and sobbed. Oh, will he eat Suki? No, Ma said, hugging her. Suki is safe in the barn. Think, Laura, all those big heavy logs in the barn walls and the door is heavy and solid, made to keep bears out. No, the bear cannot get in and eat Suki. Laura felt better then. But he could have hurt us, couldn't he, she asked. He didn't hurt us, Ma said. You were a good girl, Laura, to do exactly as I told you and to do it quickly without asking why. Ma was trembling and she began to laugh a little. To think, she said, I've slapped a bear. Then she put supper on the table for Laura and Mary. Pa had not come yet. He didn't come. Laura and Mary were undressed, and they said their prayers and snuggled into the trundle bed. Ma sat by the lamp, mending one of Pa's shirts. The house seemed cold and still and strange without Pa. Laura listened to the wind in the big woods. All around the house, the wind went crying as though it were lost in the dark and the cold. The wind sounded frightened. Ma finished mending the shirt. Laura saw her fold it slowly and carefully. She smoothed it with her hand. Then she did a thing she had never done before. She went to the door and pulled the leather latch string through its hole in the door so that nobody could get in from the outside unless she lifted the latch. She came and took Carrie, all limp and sleeping, out of the big bed. She saw that Laura and Mary were still awake, and she said to them, Go to sleep, girls. Everything is all right. Pa will be here in the morning. Then she went back to her rocking chair and sat there, rocking gently and holding Barry, baby Carrie in her arms. She was sitting up late waiting for Pa. And Laura and Mary meant to stay awake too, till he came, but at last they went to sleep. In the morning, Pa was there. He had brought candy for Laura and Mary and two pieces of pretty calico to make them each a dress. Mary's was a china blue pattern on a white ground and Laura's was dark red with little golden brown dots on it. Ma had calico for a dress too. It was brown with a big feathery white pattern all over it. They were all happy because Pa had got such good prices for his furs and he could afford to get them such beautiful presents. The tracks of the big bear were all around the barn and there were marks of his claws on the walls, but Suki and the horses were safe inside. All that day the sun shone, the snow melted and little streams of water ran from the icicles, which all the time grew thinner. Before the sun set that night, the bear tracks were only shapeless marks in the wet, soft snow. 
After supper, pa, after supper, Pa took Laura and Mary on his knees and he had a new story to tell them. The story of Pa and the bear. The story of Pa and the bear in the way. When I went to town yesterday with the furs, I found it hard walking in the soft snow. It took me a long time to get to town and other men with furs had come in earlier to do their trading. The storekeeper was busy and I had to wait until he could look at my furs. Then we had to bargain about the price of each one and then I had to pick out the things I wanted to take and trade. So it was nearly sundown before I could start home. I tried to hurry but the walking was hard and I was tired. And I had gone, I had not gone far before night came and I was alone in the big woods without my gun. There were still six miles to walk and I had come along as fast as I could. The night grew darker and darker and I wished for my gun because I, I knew that some of the bears had come out of their winter dens. I had seen their tracks when I went to town in the morning. Bears are hungry and cross at this time of year. You know, they've been sleeping in their dens all winter with nothing to eat and that makes them thin and angry when they wake up. I did not want to meet one. I had hurried along as quick as I could in the dark. By and by, the stars gave a little light. It was still black as pitch where the woods were thick, but in the open places, I could see dimly. I could see the snowy road ahead a little way, and I could see the dark woods standing all around me. I was glad when I came into, into an open place and there, there were stars that gave faint light. All the time I was watching as well as I could for bears. I was listening for the sounds they make when they go carelessly through the bushes. Then I came again into an open place and there right in the middle of my road, I saw a big black bear. He was standing up on his hind legs looking at me. I could see his eyes shine. I could see his pig snout. I could even see one of his claws in the starlight. My scalp prickled and my hair stood straight up. I stopped in my tracks and stood still. The bear did not move. There he stood looking at me. I knew it would do no good to try to go around him. He would follow me into the dark woods where he could see better than I could. I did not want to fight a winter starved bear in the dark. Oh, how I wished for my gun. I had to pass that bear to get home. I thought that if I could scare him, he might get out of the road and let me go by. So I took a deep breath and suddenly I shouted with all my might and ran at him, waving my arms. He didn't move. I did not run very far toward him, I tell you. I stopped and I looked at him and he stood looking at me. Then I shouted again. There he stood. I kept on shouting and waving my arms, but he did not budge. Well, it would do me no good to run away. There were other bears in the woods. I might meet one any time. I might as well deal with this one as with another. Besides, I was coming home to Ma and you girls. I would never get here if I ran away from everything in the woods that scared me. So at last I looked around and I got a big club, a solid heavy branch that had been broken from a tree by the weight of the snow in winter. I lifted it up in my hands and I ran straight at that bear. I swung my club as hard as I could and brought it down bang on his head. And there he still stood, for he was nothing but a big black burned stump. Okay, so look, there's Pa with the piece of wood, the club running his hands. Okay, and look, he thought the tree stump in the middle of the road or to the side of the road, whatever, his path was a bear. Look, I guess I could see it. Look, there's the feet, the paws. Here's some like forearm paws. There's maybe an ear. There's the snout. So it's not really a bear, but he thought it was. And in the dark and the shadow. Oh my gosh. I had passed her on my way to town that morning. It wasn't a bear at all. I only thought it was a bear because I had been thinking all the time about bears and being afraid I'd meet one. It really wasn't a bear at all, Mary asked. No, Mary, it wasn't a bear at all. There I had been yelling and dancing and waving my arms all by myself in the big woods trying to scare a stomp. 
Laura said ours was really a bear, but we were not scared because we thought it was Suki. Pa did not say anything, but he hugged her tighter. Oh, that bear might have beaten Ma and me all up, Laura said, snuggling closer to him. But Ma walked right up to him and slapped him, and he didn't do anything at all. Why didn't he do anything? I guess he was too surprised to do anything, Laura, Pa said. I guess he was afraid. When the lantern shone in his eyes, and when Ma walked up to him and slapped him, he knew she wasn't afraid. Well, you were brave too, Laura said. Even if it was only a stump, you thought it was a bear. You'd have hit him on the head with a club if he had been a bear, wouldn't you, Pa? Yes, said Pa, I would. You see, I had to. Then Ma said it was bedtime. She helped Laura and Mary undress and button up their red flannel nightgowns. They knelt down by the trundle bed and said their prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Ma kissed them both and tucked the covers in around them. They lay there a while looking at Ma's smooth parted hair and her hands busy with sewing in the lamplight. Her needle made little clicking sounds against her thimble and then the thread went softly swish through the pretty calico that Pa had traded furs for. Laura looked at Pa who was greasing his boots. His mustaches, his mustache and his hair and his long brown beard were, were silky in the lamplight and the colors of his plaid jacket were beautiful. He whistled, he whistled cheerfully while he worked and then he sang. The birds were singing in the morning and the myrtle and the ivy were in bloom and the sun over the hills was a dawning and that wasn't in the gloom. It was a warm night. The fire had gone to coals on the hearth and Pa did not build it up. All around the little house in the big, big woods there were little sounds of falling snow and from the eaves there was drip 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 of the melting icicles. It was just a little in just a little while, the trees would be putting out their baby leaves, all rosy and yellow and pale green. And there would be wildflowers and birds in the woods. Then there would be no more stories by the fire at night. But all day long, Laura and Mary would run and play among the trees, for it would be spring. All right, I'm going to stop right there. Put my bookmark. What I'll read next. What comes next is chapter seven, the sugar snow. I'm on page, that's page 117. So far it's 116 pages. I still like it. All right, next time we'll pick up with chapter seven.